Now, if you've got a wrap fermentation chamber, one of the things you want to do is do a calibration when you first get it. We do a factory calibration, so I've got some preset results that are already in there. However, if you really want to get a very, very good calibration and really tight numbers, then it's important to do the two-point calibration process. A lot of other less sophisticated temperature controllers will just have single-point calibration, but two-point calibration really takes into account any possible errors that you can get in the NTC probe itself. Anyway, one of the things that you will see inside the fridge is the temperature probe is on the inside right-hand wall of the fridge, just down here. Now, some of you guys might want to also install one of these two-meter extension cables, so what you can do is get this guy, plug it in the side, but then get a core reading and put this down a thermo well inside your fermenter. Of course, another thing you can do is just get a piece of masking tape and then stick it to the side of the fermenter like so, and that will also give you quite accurate readings. To be honest with you, because this insulated box is uh, such a well insulated space and all the temperature in here is going to be very, very close anyway, my personal preference is just to stick it onto the side and that's going to give you quite a good reading. But I know some customers love getting a core temp probe, so you can fit a thermo well if you really want to and stick that down into the fermenter. Anyway, let's have a closer look and I'll show you how this plug works. Now on the right hand side wall of the fridge here, you'll see this little plastic cage. The first thing you want to do is basically pry this off. So just use a flat head screwdriver, I'm just using the Leatherman. Pry off the clip from the front and then the back will also follow out like so. Then what you want to do is get this cable and you can see that there's like a little black clip here where you can unplug the temperature probe. Then you've got the longer probe if you want to put this aftermarket extension probe in here. Clip that in. Now there's no polarity with these types of NTC probes. However, we do have a little clip which will force you to put it in one way. The fridge will also make a beeping sound like that when you've got the probe unplugged. So that error sound will come up. That's completely normal. Then plug this into that like so. Then you'll see if you want to fit this guy back over the top, you can either just jam it over the cable or another nice solution, which is just a little bit better, is if you just break out one of these little parts of the grill here like that. This one's previously been cut out already. That way you can feed the probe through this little cage like so. And put this back over the cable joint just inside, inside the bridge. So now I've got this probe ready to calibrate. So in order to do the calibration, what you really want to have is an ice cup of water here, so you know it's going to be zero degrees, and then also another cup with some hot water in there. Now you can use boiling hot water, or to be honest with you, as long as you've got a temperature reading and you know exactly what your hot water is, that all, that's all that really matters. So go into the settings in here, like that, then go into two-point calibration. Start with the cold cup. So I've got this in the ice water mixture here, making sure that I don't have the temperature probe up against the side of the cup. I really want it immersed in the middle of the cup here so it's completely surrounded by ice and water. You might have to support the probe cable to make sure it stays in the middle like so. Anyway, once you go into calibration, you can see that it's zero, zero. And the ADC reading, or the analog to digital converter reading, I want to make sure that's stabilized. Now, it will always fluctuate a little bit. That's normal. That's the raw reading coming off the, uh, uh, off the ADC pin on the board. Um, but once that stabilizes within a certain range, I can see it's between sort of uh, three, four, seven something and three, four, nine something. Um, you know, you want to hit the enter button like that. And now you can see I've got to set the hot temperature. So I move the probe over into the hot cup here. Now this hot water, I've gotten an insulated cup to try and hold the temperature as consistent as possible, and definitely it's a good idea if you do that in the cold as well. Um, but I've got this one plugged in here, and you can see I've got 100 degrees as default set temperature here, but my water is actually on 51.9, so I've got to go down to my water temperature here, which I'm getting a reading off with my instant read thermometer to make sure it's the same. 
So I've now got that at 51 point, oh, looks like it's dropped a little bit to 51.6 actually. It's a bit difficult because I am measuring a, a, uh, a moving target here. It will help a little bit also if this cup is quite large and there's more thermal mass, that way the temperature is not gonna be decreasing as quickly when I'm taking a reading off it, but anyway. Anyway, now it's giving me a pretty stable reading at sort of 1360, 1370, round about there. So I'm gonna hit the enter button one more time and that calibration process is now complete.